the position of poor Americans worsened under the leadership of our opponents. Those whom government intended to help discovered a cycle of dependency that could not be broken. It was time we ended this reliance on the government process and renewed our faith in the human process. In the 80s, we see the Reagan revolution and large shrinking of the social welfare state. We don't celebrate Dependence Day on the 4th of July. We celebrate Independence Day. And a lot of the programs that we were counting on to support people in their communities, the funding for those programs gets cut. And what you start to see almost right away is people who have been living successfully in permanent housing with some support. When that support is taken away, those people start to lose their housing and they begin to hit the streets. We close down a lot of publicly funded mental health institutions or dramatically shrink them. And you have a massive number of veterans from the Vietnam War. They're coming home with untreated PTSD, serious physical health conditions that the VA does not even begin to understand at that time. And it takes a few years, but we ultimately start to see a lot of those veterans starting to fall through the safety net and hit the streets as well. Those two things create kind of a perfect storm in this country where you now have a massive group of people all at once falling out of housing, not having the support they need to get rehoused. The housing crisis has been decades in the making because we haven't built to the scale that we need to house our current population. And I think that it really hit us in the face when we started seeing people sleeping on our sidewalks. A new report by the Bay Area Council has found more than 28,000 unhoused residents in the nine county Bay Area. Our top story at 530, a new report says the Bay Area needs to come together to solve the growing homeless crisis. People's perceptions of homelessness are changing. They feel that it's wrong and something needs to be done about it. It's an emergency and everyone is saying it's an emergency, but the response isn't acting like an emergency. People ask me, is this where I live? No, it's not where I live, it's where I stay. I've never been homeless. I, I, don't, I don't understand about a tent. I've never lived in a tent before. I didn't have my tent set up right so it would get wet inside. You know, stuffs get damaged, wet. You know, rats. It's not easy, you know. It messes with your pride. I would learned how to live out there. Because you're on high alert out there. You don't know what's going to be coming. It's scary, you know. Especially when you're 60 years old. I was just watching myself just kind of deteriorate. I didn't know where to go anymore. I had applied for housing, but I was on waiting lists. You know, I mean, there's waiting lists to get on a waiting list. At this point in time, it is increasingly distressing, and really, despite many efforts to stop it, is actually only growing. If you ask people what is sort of ground zero for homelessness in the United States, my guess is 75% of people are gonna tell you Los Angeles. The other 25% are probably gonna say San Francisco. In both of those communities, although their systems are actually housing record numbers of people, it is true that homelessness is more visible and more pervasive than it's ever been before. How do we get here in California where we have such a disproportionate problem and such elevated numbers? We have had double digit increases in homelessness for out of the last five years. And because we have a long history of not providing the infrastructure needed to address homelessness, when people became homeless, they ended up directly on our sidewalks. 
The issue with homelessness is that people don't have a place to live because they can't afford the housing that's out there. And more and more people can't afford the housing that's out there. It's really a convergence of many different things happening at once. First of all, California has been underbuilding for over 40 years. Now combined with the fact that people who used to want to move into the suburbs are now moving into cities. And so suddenly there's a big press of people with higher incomes who want to move into cities, but we don't have enough housing. And at exactly that time, we have a severe labor shortage of people in construction. So construction costs have gone through the roof. It's important to remember that pre-1980, the federal government spent infinitely more on affordable housing than it does today. It's estimated that our current spend is something like 30% of what it was pre-1980. At its heart, this is a crisis caused by a disinvestment in affordable housing. It used to be that there was plenty of housing available for people with incomes below 80,000 a year. Now the percentage of housing available for those incomes is shrinking rapidly as people with higher incomes are moving into the area. You know, California is one of the most expensive housing markets in the country, which means if you hit a crisis, a health crisis, an unemployment crisis, whatever it is, it's a lot easier to lose your housing. So where did you sleep last night? In my car. We did a study. And what we found was that in the early 1990s, 11% of people experiencing homelessness were over 50. In fact, it was pretty rare. Now, over half of single homeless adults are over 50. And 44% of these older adults had never once been homeless before the age of 50. These were people who worked, usually often worked more than one job at a time. And sometime after the age of 50, something happened. They lost their job, their spouse or partner lost their job, they became sick. They lost the home and were suddenly homeless after the age of 50. My name is Agustin. I'm 64 years old. I'm diabetic, type 1. And my grandmother died from diabetes. After my grandmother died, my mother died after her, but also diabetes type 1. And they have me only me. I don't have no uncles, no grandpa, no sister, no brothers, only myself. One of the big challenges we have in solving homelessness is really the perception of who is homeless. And unfortunately, we still have a lot of people placing blame on those living outdoors rather than blame on the systems that have failed them. We live in a very individualistic society and we therefore tend to blame things on individuals as opposed to blaming things on structures. I think it's a very American thing not to sort of blame a collective policy failure and instead look for, well, if that person had just not drank alcohol or that person had just stayed in school or whatever it is. Every person living outdoors has a unique story. And it's one of tragedy, it's one of crisis, and in too many cases, it's multi-generational. That somebody who grew up in poverty is still living in poverty and raising children in poverty. And poverty is living at the margins. When you look at the data of those who are experiencing homelessness across the United States, you will note that while black people make up roughly 12% of the population, they make up nearly 40% of those experiencing homelessness. And to say it plainly, that's every other person that's experiencing homelessness is black. 
one of the main ways that families built wealth in the U.S. is through housing. Black Americans were excluded from that housing market because of discrimination. You add to that discrimination in the criminal justice environment, discrimination in education, which of course follows in a lot of ways housing and all the other forms of racism that black Americans are subject to, perhaps it shouldn't come as a surprise. If you don't have family or friends that have generational wealth, when you fall on a hard time and you're really severely writ burden, you don't have anyone to call. If your circle can't help you, you end up on the streets. People who are homeless are really vulnerable. We know that this group of people is just so much sicker. They really can't take care of their health needs. And so people wind up in the hospitals at very, very high rates. Food. Not very good for old people out here. Yeah? What's the hardest part? The cold. I can't move. I'm freezing and starving. It's just rough. It's real bad. It'd be too hard at this point to turn my life around. I'm 66. I can't do much of nothing. Yeah? When you're living outside, you're very exposed to the elements. And anything that makes that environment more dangerous is going to lead to significant loss of life. Whether that's a virus or whether that's environmental concerns, when you're outside and you don't have access to just basic things like being able to wash your hands, use the bathroom, you are just so extraordinarily vulnerable. We're trying to ration a resource that's too scarce. I think we're gonna have to be very creative about how we house people. The country can't afford to give people a modest place to live. It's the United States of America. We could afford it.